Before I introduce the next series, please give me a couple of minutes to say something to all of you. A huge thanks to everyone who has appreciated my content and encouraged me to continue creating these videos. I honestly don't have words to express my gratitude. I see really motivated people in the comment section and a big shout out to Pujit, Nikhil, Shikhar, Karthik, Balaji, Satya, Shrikant, Yasin and everyone who has helped in building this community where we all can learn from each other. Thank you again. I also have a small request to make. When I took the initiative to share my knowledge on electric vehicles, I had two major audiences in mind. People who are in the initial years of their career and electrical and electronics engineering students on the verge of starting their career. I am sure many of you have experienced the huge gap that exists between college learning and professional work environment, especially in technical jobs. I struggled at the start of my career and I wish I had a platform then which could provide me all the relevant knowledge in one place. While LinkedIn has helped greatly in reaching out to all of you, I am unable to reach college students. Here is my request. If you have found my content helpful, please share it with all your colleges and universities where you are studying or from where you have graduated. Link to the playlist that you can share is in the description box. I would highly appreciate any help from you guys in this matter. Now, coming to the course, I have not completed the motor control series and there will be several videos coming up. But for holistic understanding, I wanted to explain control systems. It will help us better understand the tuning and dynamics of the PID controllers used in a motor controller. So let's begin. You are driving a brand new car and the speed limit is 40 km per hour. The way you speed up your car is by pressing the accelerator pedal. This information is then passed on to the car either mechanically or electrically. Torque is produced by the engine or the motor and the speed increases. You observe this speed on the speedometer. Now. Your brain becomes a control system. The brain has a stored reference speed or the desired speed which is 40 in this case and it compares it to the speedometer value. When it sees a positive error, it knows that more pedal needs to be pressed so that the speed rises. And when the error goes to zero, the brain knows that it needs to hold on to that pedal position. What you have achieved is a zero error. And it is the goal of most control systems to match the reference with the feedback so that the error goes to zero. But there is a problem. Human beings are not always accurate and efficient in doing this job. Let us take this case. An aggressive rider might press on the accelerator pedal too much at the start. This might lead to a very fast increase in speed and there is a chance that the speed might overshoot. The error becomes negative and the brain needs to then correct for this overshoot by decreasing the pedal angle. Finally, a steady state is reached where the error is zero. Let us take one more scenario where the driver is slow or conservative. In this case, there might not be any overshoot but it takes more time to reach a steady state. In terms of control systems, this response has a long rise time but zero overshoot. So what is the best response? Actually, there is no best response. The control system should produce the exact response that you desire. In some cases, it is okay to have an overshoot of let's say 10%, while in other cases, it is completely fine to have a slower response. In fact, in most cases, it is actually better to have a bit slower response as the system will be more robust. We will see later why that is the case. So, now we have understood that the brain is not a good control system at all, unless it is trained extensively. But that is almost never the case. So, we replace the brain with a controller. Yes, your human is being replaced with a machine but for a good cause. The idea is that if the controller knows exactly how the car responds, or in other words, the controller knows the dynamics of the car, then it can produce a desired response each and every time. But there is another problem. Controllers can be notorious and make the system vulnerable if not properly designed. And here enters the control theory. There is a whole set of theory which talks about how to make the system and the controller stable. To be specific, there is the Routh Hurwitz criteria, Nyquist plots, Root Locus method, Bode plots, etc. And there are several types of controllers as well PID, lead lag compensators, LQR, reinforcement learning, etc. For these videos, 
we are constraining ourselves to bode plots and pid controllers this is because most systems can be well understood just by bode plots and pid controllers if you understand these two then it is easy to expand your knowledge in control theory let's say you buy a drone from the market and you want to change the tuning parameters of the pid controller well one way is to use the hit and trial method until you get your desired response this approach may not yield good results and probably you will damage the drone but at the end of this series you should be able to model this drone and design a controller using your knowledge of control theory and it will be fun for sure before we understand or tune a pid controller we will go through the basics we'll talk about how frequency response helps us what are fourier and laplace transforms what is a transfer function what are bode plots and how to draw them by hand what are stability margins how to model a system using different techniques and how to tune a controller by different methods and simulate all of this in simulink we will also see the practical aspects of designing a controller like anti wind up for the integrator noise filters for differentiators cascaded loops why we need to take extra care in discrete systems etc if this sounds intimidating don't worry we will walk through each and everything at this point i would like to answer a question why am i doing a course on control systems when there are several resources available already well i am not going to teach you anything new but i am going to teach you control systems in the way i understand and the way i think my audience will understand i have kept it very simple to bode plots and pid controllers as most of the tasks can be done using them also control systems will form the basis of many things we will learn in the future so whether you are an experienced control engineer or just a beginner i am sure there is something to take away for everyone we will begin with the control systems next week till then go back and revise the videos in the motor control series remember while you may have understood the concepts once it's only revision that will give you the confidence in applying those concepts Happy learning and see you next time.